Now, welcome back to the channel, all my hustlers and grinders and go-getters, the ones that wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm going to get this money. It's Matt in the JoJo, and we're back with another live. Yeah, and um, it's been a while, so hi. And we are going to talk today about the things that you need to do to achieve success in life and in business. And one of the very first things you can do is to... You know, think of all the things that would keep you from your goals and keep you from achieving everything you want in business and just do the reverse of that. Because some of the things that will keep you from achieving success is being impatient, showing up late, being unprepared, not being confident, not advertising, not asking for referrals not asking for reviews and being transactional instead of relational. And all you want to do is, you know, flip that and just make sure you do all the other things, you know, just the opposite of the things that will keep you from succeeding. Also, if you don't make a goal, you can't achieve a goal. So you definitely want to make sure that you're always making goals. Joe, Joe, that's that fire right there for real. I love that. So put everything in reverse and do everything else the other way. So if you're not asking for reviews, guess what? You ain't ever going to get no reviews. If you're not advertising, guess what? You're not going to get no business. <laughs> so it's time to step your game up and put money in your pocket. Yeah. Guess what we did today? We did... $3,895 before 1 p.m. We was out there hustling today. I know. I actually didn't work today. I had an appointment. And when my I got out of my appointment, I'm like, hey, I'm going to give him a call and see if he needs me to show up. And you were already home. I was at home <laughs> editing a video, sitting on the couch, drinking my coffee around 12 49. We were done with the day and it felt damn good, Jojo. So you did five full loads. Yes, by I did. Like 12:30. Me, the Julio, and his wifey got it done, Jojo. We showed up, we hustled, we took <laughs> no breaks. It was fr it's Friday. We're trying to get 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 it done so yeah. so we can enjoy the weekend. So some of the things that I mentioned, you know, um, you, you might have other things on your list because everybody has different struggles. Everybody has, you know, things that they're, you know, really good at and things they're not good at. So whenever you start any task, if you open up a business or, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, if you think to yourself, what could I, what will, what would I do to ensure that I bomb? that I'm absolutely not going to do well. Make a little list of those and then be like, those are the things I'm not doing. Those are the things I'm fixing. And, you know, some things people need more work on than others. Um, so starting with patience, being patient is such an important trait to have because you have to have the ability to, to wait, to wait for results. You know, you need if you if you want to start dieting, you need to have the patience to, you know, do what you're doing and wait for the result. You don't get a six pack overnight. Your bank account's not going to go up overnight. If you're investing, you're putting your money in whatever, like an IRA or a mutual funds and stuff like that. That does not grow overnight. The more patient you are, the the more the rewards will come to you. And especially if you're a new business and you watch our videos and you're thinking, damn, Matt in the JoJo make a thousand to two thousand dollars a day, but my phone is not ringing. Well, guess what? You got to be patient and put in the damn work. Back in the day when we first started the business, people didn't know who we were. Who is Sonoma Strong Holland? We're a new business. No one knew who we were. So we had to be patient and wait. And my phone was crickets for the first year at times. I would second guess myself, like, is this the right business to start? Jojo, is this going to work out? 
But you know what? I had to wait it out, be patient and stay consistent and kept advertising, kept getting our name out there to get the business. But I had to be patient. And it took a long time to get these repeat customers to keep calling my phone on the daily. And now we work every single day. So you got to be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Put it, planting those seeds and watching them sprout. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Being prepared, being prepared, knowing what you're going to say to your clients, knowing, you know, what you're going to say when people call. Um, I've heard that you do it so much, you do it until it becomes boring and then you're really prepared. And also just having, if you do junk removal, having the price sheet knowing what to what what things cost to get rid of so you know how to price your jobs all of that is being prepared yeah back in the day i used to answer the phone like hello and the customers would be like is this a junk removal company i wasn't saying hello this is matthew with sonoma strong hauling i wasn't prepared i didn't know how to run a business the legit and right way but once i got prepared and started wearing uniforms started talking more professional and started showing up to jobs and knocking the jobs out on the spot we started making more money absolutely we did yeah. Ab absolutely you just you want to set yourself apart from the competition and you want to look very professional when you show up. And the other thing is being on time, be on time. Don't be late. Don't leave your, you know, customers. Don't leave them hanging and, um, and show up. You would be so surprised at how many people call us because the person that they went with didn't even show up. So I always tell the Julio like this, 10 minutes early is on time. So we always show 10 minutes early to every job we go to or we try to. The worst thing in the world is to show up late without letting someone know you're running late or not being uh, not being there and being a no-show is the worst thing ever. I don't know how many jobs we get. The customer calls me up like, hey, another junk removal company was supposed to come today. We're moving out. This is our last day. And they did not show up. And guess what? We come and save the day and get that money. And guess what? They're going to tell other people about them that they didn't show up. So yeah, you, you got to show up. I was just going to say referrals work both ways. So if, so if you do a great service and, and people know about you, people, you know, they've heard great things about you, you're going to get referrals like that. And you're also going to be, you know, people are going to be like, I wouldn't go for them. They never even showed up or they were late. They made me late or I, they had me waiting forever. They wasted my time. Nobody likes their time to be wasted. Oh, no. I actually had a customer call me three days ago and he was like, hey. How's it going, Matt? I said, pretty good. He said, I heard so many good things about your company. So many people told me to go with you, and that's why I chose your company. So we ended up doing, what, two loads over there? Mm -hmm. And it was all word of mouth. All it was word all, of mouth. It was all, and he, he was like, he had to use us. He, he actually had to use us and meet us because he had heard from multiple people how good we were. And we, that felt amazing. And that's why it's so important to keep your realtors happy because all it takes is one good realtor that's kicking ass in the office to tell all of her realtor friends. Trust me, they'll let other realtors know in the office. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. We have R5 Hauling says one of the jobs I got was because someone didn't show up. Yep, absolutely. The jobs I've had so far have been impressed that I call when I'm on my way and I'm always 15 to 20 minutes early. Nice. Good nice. for you. Good I like for that. You. No doubt you're going to be so, so successful in this business. Um, you know what? The next thing we're going to talk about is I would say the most important thing, and that is confidence. You got to have confidence when you show up to jobs and you're talking to the customer when you give them a price and that they know, you know what, they can get the job done. They can take care of this stuff. Maybe you show up to a house and it's a hoarder house and their stuff just stacked to the ceilings and their stuff all behind the property everywhere. And they have a time, they have a time limit. They need to get this stuff done at a certain time. You want to make sure that they know that you can get the job done. You got to have that confidence and give the customer the confidence that you can get the job done. So confidence is so important. And I've been told multiple times by customers that, you know, I went with you guys because 
when I talked to Matt over the phone. Uh, he had a confidence in his voice, and I had no doubt that he was the job. He was the guy to do the job and get the job done. And I was like, "Wow! Like that's really kind of cool that just having that tone in your voice and the ability to speak to a customer and let them know, hey, we can get it done. We're the people for you. You just sit back, relax. We've got this. You don't even need to lift a finger. I know exactly how to do my job. That that is." Confidence will get you so far. And when you go into real, realtor offices, you know, confidence, once again, the confidence to look somebody in the eye, shake their hand, have a conversation with them and sell yourself. And confidence, not everybody has that naturally. Sometimes people have to work to be more confident, but being confident will get you super far in life. So definitely, definitely work on your confidence. And it actually like doesn't happen overnight. It happens when you, you know, you go to a hundred realtor offices and you answer your phone a hundred times. Confidence is built throughout time. It's built through doing, you know, you do something, you get a great result, you get confidence. You do something, you get a great result, you get confidence. And that's just, how it works. So the more you do it, the more confident you will become. Yeah. The worst thing to do is show up to a big job and it's like 15 to 20 loads and you're sitting there and you, you don't have the confidence to give a price to the customer. And you're telling the customer, oh, I'm not sure if it's 15 loads or 35 loads. Guess what? That customer ain't going to go with your service. So you got to show up and know what you're talking about. And it does take time. Like the JoJo said earlier, you got to be patient. You'll learn. The best way to learn how to price these big jobs is go to them and mess up a few times. And trust me, you'll never do that again. Yep. And I trust me, I've done it a few <laughs> times. And um, advertise a lot of people. Well, you kind of said it earlier. You, you start a business and you think your phone's going to ring right away. You have to advertise and you have to advertise consistently. And, and we really don't, Pay, when we first started, we paid for no advertising. We used all the free platforms. Now we'll boost a Facebook ad. But advertising is the most important thing because who knows who you are? Like you have to get your name out there. You have to let people know what you do. Your phone just doesn't magically start ringing when you start a business. And I think a lot of companies, what they do wrong is when they get super busy they stop advertising like, you know what? I got work for three more days or for the rest of the week. I'm not going to advertise no more. That's what you don't want to do. I don't care how busy you get. Keep advertising every single day. And just because something's not working, keep doing it. Keep doing it every single day. You want to advertise and put your business out there in as many places as you can. There's not really a bad way to advertise. Door hangers work great. Bandit signs work great. Craigslist works great. Some people hate on Craigslist. It does work. Facebook, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got LinkedIn. Just because something doesn't work right now, today or tomorrow, doesn't mean it's not going to work in the future. So stay advertising 24-7 and get your business out there. It's a volume game, especially if no one knows who your business is. Guess what? You got to advertise even more harder to get your name out there, especially if you got a lot of competition in your area. You got to advertise even more harder. So don't stop advertising no matter what. I don't care how busy you are. If my phone's ringing off the hook like Monday, we had like 20 calls come in on Monday. And guess what I did Monday? I'm advertising. I'm still advertising. I'm still hitting it hard. So you got to stay consistent and advertise, advertise, advertise and never slack off on it. It's so important. Yeah. And that's another thing. You go back to patience, right? You're doing all this stuff and you can't expect it to happen overnight. So patience is, you know, it's, it's so important. It's so important. It's so important. It's, I forgot the word that I was going to say, but that's okay. Um, a lot of times people will get busy and they'll be like, oh, I don't need to advertise anymore because I'm good. I'm booked this week. Oh, I shouldn't advertise because I can't take on any more people. Keep advertising. Keep advertising. You never know when that great big job will come in. You never know when an emergency cleanup will come in that's worth really good money. And you, you just make it work. And especially in the wintertime, 
you got to attack. You got to advertise like <laughs> like you're going to be broke if you don't get no business. Because trust me, the jobs in the springtime and in yeah. the summertime, they come in. They come in. But in the wintertime, you got to be the predator. You got to go out there and find the jobs. I don't know how many bandit signs we put out. We put so many bandit signs out and so many of them got took the next day. But guess what? We still put more out. Yeah. It ain't going to stop us. Consistency, right? Yeah. So uh, the big route asked a question, and I am going to come to that. So don't leave. I see that there. There's just some things written down that I need to cover first. Um, asking for referrals. Don't just think people are going to do it. Um, one thing that Matt will do is anytime he sees like a moving truck or a, a you know maid, a maid service, sometimes when you're pumping gas, those people will pull up hand out a, a business card, let them know what you do. Cause movers come across people that have leftover stuff. They don't take it and they can refer you. Anytime you see an opportunity to network, do that. You'll get referrals and you know, you can refer them and they can refer you and you could just have a really great, nice network. Um, we actually network really well with other haulers in our area. Yes, we do. We get so much work from other haulers in our area. So it's real important to network and pass out these business cards and flyers and door hangers like candy at Halloween. You just want to get them everywhere. I don't care if you see a, a bulletin board somewhere where you can thumbtack one up, put a bunch of them up, up right there. Just get your business out there. Mm -hmm. Courtesy says they got four jobs in one month from a client that says every one of her old junk people kind of screwed her over and they locked her in. One client can help your entire month of revenue when you need it. That is so true. Oh, yes. One customer I is worth so much money in the long run. Let me tell you, you get one customer on the team and they start using you every single year, one to two to three times. Then they start referring you to their cousins, their neighbors. A lifetime customer is priceless. It's just as, as important as getting refer reviews. It's so important. Yeah, because somebody asked recently, would you rather have like 20 small jobs or like two great big ones? I'd rather have a bunch of small ones because I could turn all those customers into lifetime customers and they can tell other people about our business. Yeah, that's a way to look at it. Oh, yeah, for that's sure. A, that's a way to look at it for sure. Yep. And then... Um, Reviews. Nothing is more important than reviews for your business. Everybody looks at reviews. Get your reviews up. I'm telling you right now, anytime I'm going to go out to eat and eat somewhere, I'm looking at the reviews. If it's 4.9, 4.7, and they have a thousand reviews, guess what? Me and the JoJo, we're going to hop into SL500, drop the top, and go try that place out. But if the reviews are horrible, like a three or something, guess what? We ain't going there to try their food. So you got to get your reviews up. You do. And it, for multiple reasons. Number one, you want people to, to look look and read great things about you. And number two, that helps your search so much. The more Google reviews you have, the more good Google reviews you have. And don't think they're just going to happen. You have to ask for them. Even a person that really, really likes you, they often don't even think to do that. So always ask them and always send it to them like send them a link to do it before you even leave their property. And you can't get frustrated if you ask 10 people and you get no reviews at all. Keep grinding, keep hustling and keep asking. Cause then the next week you might get two that week or three that week, or maybe two in a day. It's a numbers game. It's all a numbers game, Jojo. Everything is a numbers game. It's a game. numbers game. Yeah. The more, the more jobs you do, the more money you get, the more, uh, Flyers you pass out, the more calls you'll get. The more you post online, the more people are going to see you. It's all, I mean, it's not rocket science. The more you do it, the more you'll get. Oh, yeah, the for more, sure. The, you know. It's just like when you're when you're out eating. If you keep eating at the buff, buffet, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get fat. You're going to be a fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you're, that's just, that's how it works. Not, not rocket science here. Um, let's see, stay consistent and see results, which once again, patience be one of the, th one of the advice that I give people is to do today for your future self. 
everything you do, you're doing for your future self. So ask yourself, mm, is this benefiting me in my future? Then you should do it. If it's not, you shouldn't do it. And, you know, you'll you'll reap the re your future self will, you know, reap the rewards of everything that you're doing today. So. Damn, Jojo, you wrote some fire today. I, I wrote a lot of stuff. You wrote a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, leave uh, any questions you have for us, and we will um, get to it. I just want to make sure I don't. And we also have a big announcement we coming. We can't talk about it yet, but in a few weeks, we'll announce it. And it is going to change the junk removal world. Some people think we're opening up a franchise. Some people think that me and the JoJo are having a baby. We're not doing Some that. people <laughs> think that uh, Juliet's going to be full-time. Well, just wait for it. It's coming in two weeks. We'll announce it, and you definitely, definitely don't want to miss it because it will change the junk removal game for yep. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to take this question because it's interesting, but I do have some questions for you. Um, so... The big route says, should I pay off my home before starting a business? My advice, I would have started a business before I bought a home. But you have a home now, so my advice doesn't help you at all. Um, so what kind of, first of all, what kind of business? Are we talking junk removal? Like, what do you have in mind? That's my first question. So answer, answer that. And if anybody else has a different, like, want to add to this, feel free. Um, start. So us, just a little backstory. We um, lived in an apartment complex and we didn't a have little, a tiny, little one. Little one. When, uh, when Matt and I first met, we just had our cars. He had one, I had one. And um, when we moved into our apartment, we just, everything we owned fit in our cars. We had no couches, no mattresses. We're we laying on the floor. We didn't need a U-Haul. It was all in our car. So when we would visit, we would just sit on the floor so we didn't have a couch. So, you know, we just, we didn't. And and um, so anyhow, when we uh, decided to start the business, we started it with just a pickup truck living in an apartment complex. And... Um, that really gave us the ability to like when we started making money, really stack it. I had a different job. He had a different job. We were doing this as a side hustle. Right. So we we didn't do the any payments like we didn't when, when we Matt saved for the truck and just bought a little used truck. So we didn't have like huge payments where we weren't able to you know, make ends meet. If we were able to stack that money and just stack it and put it back into the business with a bigger, with a trailer and then a bigger trailer and then eventually a dump truck. But we own a home now um, because we saved for a big down payment. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay my house off before starting a business, but it also really matters like what business you're wanting to start, you know, because you don't want to put like a ton of money into your new business. Um, starting a business is always a little, it's a, it's a little risky you, because you know, your population matters, the income that's in your area matters. Like do people have money to spend on this service that you're wanting to offer? And if it's not junk removal, then you should, you, you know, really do some research and find out what's needed in your area. A lot of times people don't do that. And that's such a good thing to do because the best businesses are when you find something that's needed in your area and then you simply provide the service to fill it. And it's all about how motivated you are, how hard you're going to hustle when that phone does ring. Are you going to go tackle that job to get that customer on the team for life? What I would do if I was anywhere, anyone out there in the YouTube world that's watching this right now, and you're thinking about starting a business, I would start off small. Start off small, have as little overhead as possible, and just test the waters. And just go out there and just do your thing as a side hustle. 
and keep stacking your repeat customers. Get one customer at a time and be patient. Stay consistent advertising and just keep working your main job and do this as a side hustle. If it's pressure washing houses, if it's being a handyman, just do it as a side hustle with as little overhead as possible. You can get a cheap pickup truck for like two to three grand if you want to start a handyman service or a trash business and start with just that. Like us, I started with the pickup truck. I didn't have no money. I had to stack my money at the grocery store for like, what, six months to buy a damn pickup truck to get ahead in life. I started picking up trash, started getting my customers. And once I started getting more customers, my money started getting better. But I kept my main job and kept this as a side hustle. And all that money that came in as a side hustle, guess what I did? I put it away like I didn't have it. I put it away. A lot of people, what they do is they spend their money that they get. And they think it's always going to come. What you want to do is save your money, stack your money so you can live that better life later on. Yeah. And another thing is always let the market tell you what to do. Exactly. So don't start a business uh, buying like multiple trucks because you just think you're going to kill it. You know, um, when he, he we started with the truck. And when the phone calls really started coming in, we just we knew no doubt if we had a trailer, we'd make more money because that's less trips and we could charge more and you do bigger jobs. And, I remember we yeah. stayed in the apartment complex and we were just stacking our money. I was still eating top ramen. I was still eating oatmeal. I remember we were staying there and I had 200 grand in my business account. And guess what? I still was riding the old truck. I still was driving the utility trailer. I still was doing my thing, not spending no money. Even though I had money, I was saving. Yeah. And doing that, sacrificing like that, allowed us to make a whole shit ton more money in the long run because I wasn't nervous to give the customer a higher price because I didn't care if I got the job or not. I wasn't living job to job like some of these junk haulers do. That's the worst thing to do is live job to job. So then you're desperate to get the job. Stack your money, put it away, and trust me, it'll be better that way. Yeah. Absolutely. We had, we had, a, we had an interesting comment. I'm going to talk about this for a second because we recently bought a, our dream truck, right? And it was a very careful decision that took like some years to make. And somebody wrote, you know, oh, now you have a little bit of money. Now you bought something and you're flexing. You should, you, your money could be better spent, um, investing instead of blowing it on things and and um and i don't usually like type <laughs> type back but i would thought about it and i was like wait a second you don't even know like he worked two jobs forever we had tons of money saved we paid off a dump truck there's all this stuff that we did before we treated ourselves to this truck so um so we do take our own advice we are investors. We invested in certain things. I max out my IRA accounts. We have different streams of income. Like we make money off of YouTube. And right now we're about to hit 30,000 subscribers. We got today. Today, today. we'll hit 30,000 subscribers. We got sponsors. We got other side hustles as like selling stuff that we get from jobs. We, we scrap metal. We have our classes. <laughs> we are on the hustle. So if we want something nice. <laughs> We deserve it. Yeah, they, they, they really like. I was like, hold, I was like, hold on, hold on. You don't <laughs> like, know what's wow. up. You have no idea what's in my bank account. Come, <laughs> come, calm down, calm down. Um, do you outsource your business calls? I actually like this question because, um, we don't. He answers. He always answers the phone, and you know, some people give us slack about that just oh you shouldn't be you know you should have somebody do that for you but you, the customers absolutely love it they're like you know oh it's you like you show you showed up you answered the phone you have great communication skills you're down to earth you're relational and not trans transactional which uh some people don't understand the meaning of that but a person that's just transactional just goes there gives them a price shakes their hand gets the job done uh, swipes the card and goes. He's relational. He'll talk to you by your first name. He'll remember certain things. He'll like, um, 
you know, gab for a little bit before he gives the price. So one thing that I will do is I will sell myself before I give the customer a price. So when I show up, guess what? Mr. Mavic, he's going to talk to the customer, get to know the customer and sell myself before I even try to give them the the price for the job. Mm -hmm. It's so important to do that. Yeah. So uh, SS says, my cousin and I started an LLC called Apex innovative group. We have experience in transportation and construction, but not sure which niche to enter. Did you guys have the same issue at first? A little bit. I thought about doing moving and junk removal. I was like, what should I do? Should I do them both? Should I I do junk removal? Should I do moving? Should I do them both together? And I'm glad that we just picked the junk business because you're in and out super fast and the customers are always happy. But yeah. Yeah. And we also thought we would do more like hauling stuff from one place to another. And that, that kind of fizzled out too. Junker, you, we just fell in love with junk removal. Oh, it's the best business in the whole entire world. Let me tell you, the yeah. junk game done changed my life for sure. In yours too. Yeah. So I would have to say that, um, so you have experience in both of those. You only get one life. I would pick the one that you're most passionate about. Um, but I, but I really would focus on one because when you're able to focus on one, you're able to, you know, give it lots of attention. You don't, you're not like, um, wearing yourself too thin, you know, like you're really able to focus in, yeah, make this work, give it, give it your all, um, you know, and, and grow it to the best of your ability. I think sometimes when people, I, I can do this and this and this, and they spread themselves really wide. It's also hard to search, you know, um, innovative group. So I would even, I'm, I'm not not meaning to bash you because number one, I, I love that you're starting a business and I love that you are goal oriented and you have the initiative, you know, like to to take charge of your life and start something wonderful for yourself. But um, whenever you give yourself a name, always make sure it's really searchable. Like people can search the name, see it and know exactly what it is you do. So if if you're going to use that as the name, maybe like, it on your truck or some or underneath kind of be more specific about what it is that you do. But I would take the one that you're most passionate about because you only have one life and you should absolutely enjoy what you do. So better than television has a question. What advertisement option have you seen the best results with? So when it comes to platforms, I would definitely say Google Business Profile and Facebook. But word of mouth keeps us so damn busy, so damn busy. I would say that's probably the number one, word of mouth. But when it comes to like advertising and places people can find us at would be Facebook, Google Business Profile, Bandit Signs, and just word of mouth. Word of mouth is just crazy. It just is crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, word of and don't mind. sleep on Craigslist either. Craigslist <laughs> does work, especially when you're first starting. Um, and and um, we know people that have gotten huge jobs at, off of Craigslist. Sometimes you have just the people cheap, cheap. They're just looking for the absolute cheap, but not always. And um, we know people that have gotten like really good sized jobs from from there. VNA hauling and junk removal is a student that is taking our class right now. What's up, Sonoma Strong? I just came home from passing out 200 flyers, and I have an estimate tomorrow. Let's go. Can't wait for next week's coaching. And call. let me tell you, VNA hauling and junk removal are some go-getters for sure. Let me tell you, the guy works his normal job, gets home after work, does a little junk removal job, and then also is out there grinding, putting in the footwork, and pounding the pavement, passing out a bunch of flyers. He is determined to make it work for sure. And I love the pictures you've been posting, too, just so you know. Yep. Uh, Circle and Dumpsters, keep your money. Answer your own calls. I hate people always wanting their hands in my pocket. I actually learned this when I was a teacher. I was listening to a sixth-grade teacher. Cause I was in a class with a student and 
I, I'll never forget this because in sixth grade, he was saying, whenever you start making money, there'll always be somebody there trying to separate you from your money. This is Ken. And I, th- I was like, oh, wow, what a great thing to teach six, you know, sixth graders. And then he went on and he was like, how they do that. And they'll, they'll be like commercials, you know, the ads like this ad, that ad. And um, he had went to the point where he was having kids look through magazines and cut out ads of like how people are trying to, you know, like car salesmen and all kinds of stuff. People that separate you from your money, if at all possible, and you can do it yourself, do it. And you do a great job answering the phone. Oh, I love answering the phone. I love talking to the customers. I'm good at selling ourselves and getting to the job. So, yeah, keep your money in your pocket. You're going to get that phone call from the shopping cart guy. Let me tell you, he's going to say, oh, hey, is this so-and-so? Oh, sorry, wrong number. But, hey, I got one spot left. (laughs) And I'm calling you up because we have like 20,000 people that shop at our grocery store. And uh, I try to get a, a hold of another junk hauler, but I actually accidentally called the wrong number. Would you mm-hmm. like to meet up and get your business flyer on our shopping cart? It's only going to cost $1,100 for like three months. Stay away from them. Stay away. Stay away. Let me tell you, stay away. I don't know how many times that JoJo hops in there in the store and puts her purse right in front of where the advertising is. I'm not or, looking at that. Yeah, I don't know. But they try to get your ass, make you feel real, real special. Yeah. Don't but fall for it. Another one is Yelp. As soon as you start a business and sign up for it, we just did the, like the free Yelp platform. We've never paid for Yelp. And uh, as soon as you do that, they're just going to, they're going to call you up and tell you um, with, if you pay a certain amount that you'll be seen more or um, other haulers advertisements won't show up on yours. And it's just, it's just another way to separate you from your money. The best one is the website people. They'll call you up like, Hey, hey, I noticed that your website's not ranking on Google and we can help you in 30 days start ranking for a certain amount of money. Don't fall for it. You found me. You found me. Like you typed in and you found me and you got my number and you're calling me because you can't find me on our website. It's just, it's interesting to me. Don't fall for it. Don't, and and when you start a business, you'll just get that. You get probably 15 to 20 scam calls a day. And that's I get on a, a low day. I get a bunch of scam calls a day. But one thing you want to do is always, always answer them. Because every once in a while, you'll get a job off the scam call. I actually had one that was Yelp. Someone called me up and it said Yelp. I said, hey, I'm not interested at all. I don't want to use you guys for advertising. I'm not paying no money. The guy's like, Hey, I actually have a job for you. I can see work for you. So (laughs) you just never, you never know. So always answer your phone. (laughs) Even if it's a scam call, you never know. It might be a job. Yep. Um, circle and dumpster rentals says I'm working on fading out of dumpster rentals to just do junk removal full time. So you offer a dumpster rental service. And now I think he's like kind of fading out of that. Good luck to you. I heard there's more money in uh, in junk removal. So Junk Solution DFW's in the house. He said, what up, guys? Long time no see. Trash life, baby. That's right. I love the trash business. I never thought in my life I'd really be a trash man. I always want to be a garbage man since a little kid. And guess what? I'm living my dream now. You know what? I was just thinking new, a new T-shirt could be trash life. Trash life? I think that would make a great t-shirt. Trash life. Kind of like hashtag trash life. Kind of like Tupac Thug Life, but trash life. Just trash life. Oh, we gotta do that. We gotta do that then. Yeah, I I think that would make is that a good shirt idea? Because we have Holland and Ballin shirts, but I kind of think trash life would be kind of cool. So big Chris is in the house. How's it going, Chris? We got Troll Hunter in the building too. He said guy gets a new tundra and pretends he don't know nobody. Hey, guess what? I don't I don't even drive that thing. I love it so much. <laughs> I don't even want to even drive it. Oh my gosh. It's it's I like it's really it's the prettiest truck I've and I'm not even a truck person. I, I just go outside. <laughs> I, I look out the window all the time just at it. It's such when a pretty I, truck. You should have seen it when we first got it. I opened the garage up and I was like, Jojo, come here, Jojo, check this out. I shut the garage. I was like, check this out. And went, ooh. Yeah. And did. then you seen that tundra. Out. I was like, oh my gosh. 
I got an erection, Joe. Joe, seriously, I think yes. so. Oh, my Matthew. bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, sorry about that. No, I love the truck that much, JoJo. It's nice. Yes. I'm just kidding. Come on now. That's great. Um, she said that's fifth great. dimension. Well, I was actually just thinking about you the other day. I was, man, I don't think she watches our videos anymore because I have not seen a comment from her. So that's great. Um, hi, I hope you are doing fabulous. Uh, let's see. Matt needs to get the first scratch in that Tundra so he can drive it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Don't even say that. Don't even say that. Yeah, it's it'll be kept really nice. But um, like we said, uh, actually, a couple years ago, we were uh, looking at trucks. We were looking at trucks and I was like, it's just a, I'm I'm so against payments. Like I, I have zero we t between us, zero credit card payments. We don't we don't do credit cards. We don't have uh, the only thing that we ever had payments on is the dump trucks and they pay for themselves. Like, you know, that they move every time they move, they're making money. So they more than pay for themselves. So we're like, mm, we're going to, well, we'll just, we'll wait a while and we'll stack our money some more and, and we'll pay off a dump truck. Let's pay off one of those dump trucks. And then, and then, you know, then we'll like splurge. And yeah. Then we put a big down payment in my, Payments per month is super cheap, super yeah. cheap. So yeah, I love that thing. And guess what? The JoJo never wants to drive it. She says she says it's she's... way too big for me. It's way too big. It's badass though. I mean, I'm small. Like a lot of people are shocked when they meet us. They're like, "Oh wow," <laughs> because he's tall and I'm really the short. truck has so much shit. We have no idea what it even does. We, we have... have to take the time or read the book. It does things like it just maybe the next time we go live, we'll do it inside the truck. Um, that might be kind of cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But yeah, but it has a lot of features like tech features that we're like, hmm, we're not sure how yeah. this works. You have no idea. <laughs> so we have Excalibur hauling and junk removal. What's up, Matt and JoJo? I'm getting ready to do my first pop up event for a home show. Nice. Nice way oh, to get your business great, out there. Great way to get your business out there. So here you go. Here's here's a couple of ideas. Um for we we were talking about the uh things that cost money. And then I had something in my head. Um somebody said something about like keeping your money in your pocket or paying you know, paying a lot of money for some form of advertising and you'll, you'll get much better results. If you do uh, something like we did, we did our, uh, so the little league called us and wanted us to maybe sponsor like a program. And what they did was they were offering kids when the games were over, the kids were kind of cleaning the field and then they would get free candy from the snack shack when they were done. Well, the guy from the Little League called us up and said, um, the, the people that run the Snack Shack don't want to do that with the kids anymore. And I really want to keep the program going because the kids really love it. So I have an idea. If you sponsor this cleanup after, after um, the games program, we'll put a banner of yours up. And your logo on the buckets that the kids use to clean up. And then, you know, with the money that you've put into it, um, it will pay for their free candy. And we're like, keep the kids working. I love baseball. This sounds great. Parents see our sign. Win, win, win. So things like that, that's what you should focus on. And if you have money to spend. That's where you should do it because number one, it's great for your community. Number two, it looks great. It's um, it's PR, public relations. It's how your community perceives you. And the parents that are there every day in, you know, with their kids in Little League will often have junk removal. And a lot of times it is people with money because they have the money to put their kids in because pro programs like that aren't aren't always cheap. You, you have to pay for your kid to be in little league. You have to pay for uh, cleats and stuff like that. And what happened last week, Jojo, just last week, I got a hit on next door. And what the lady say, 
I seen your banner at the Little League, and thanks for doing that, and I would like to use your service. And we went over there, did a full load, and she tipped us $100. So it already paid for itself. Yep, yep. So it's great. You can, um, you know, sign up and be in, like, local parades and stuff like that, and that costs some money. But to me, that's money that's much better spent. Yeah, when it comes to the kids, Sonoma Strong Holland is always trying to help. Like, we'll help the kids get their candies. If the Girl Scouts come to our house, guess what? I'm buying five boxes. They're coming to the e house. Even if I give them away. When it comes to Christmas, guess what we're doing? We're passing out free toys. That's what we do here. Always try to give back. It will always come back to you, for sure. Whatever you put into the universe will absolutely come back to you. And that's good or bad. So always keep that in mind. So if you want to be a dirt bag, guess what? Bad things are going to happen. Fifth Dimension says that uh, she was in California for a couple of months and off YouTube. You have a YouTube channel? like, maybe, Or maybe she was off YouTube, not on YouTube. Yeah, I was confused what she meant by that. Off YouTube. You was in California, didn't hit us up? Come on now. Come on. We're now. in Northern California, so that's, you know, a, that's a lot further away from Southern California. Let's see. Just found you guys. Awesome stuff. Love it. Question is, what's your insurance like for your business? Okay. So commercial insurance on the dump truck is for one of them is running around 5500 for the year. And then liability insurance is like $50 a month. So hopefully that answers your question. Yep. Then we got does. 29 people in the building. Make sure you smash that like button if you love me and the JoJo. And I do believe tonight by 12 o'clock, we'll have 30,000 subscribers. What are we going to do? Well, I'll be asleep. You'll but be I'll asleep? wake up in the morning and I'll be like, woo! I'm not going to bed until we hit 30,000. So, you know, just I don't know if you like know the story at all, but we had no idea when we started YouTube when um, and, and I've said this lots of times when we started our business, we had a budget of zero dollars, no money. And when you have a budget of zero dollars for advertising, you're doing Instagram, you're doing Facebook, you're doing all the free stuff, which in this day and time, it is amazing that we live right now where you can advertise and reach so many people for no money whatsoever on your phone on the couch you can do it right there first thing in the morning later on in the day this is a blank paycheck you can actually record your own commercial these cameras are so good they're really good and um you could just you could take great pictures you can post them you can make videos you can post them you could do stories you could do reels you could do TikTok. It, it's, it's, it, it is never ending. This is a blank paycheck. It's up to you what you do with it. So if you want to make more money, advertise more. If you want to start a YouTube channel, guess what? You can do it all off your phone. And guess where I edit everything? Right here on the phone. This is a blank paycheck where you can make a shit ton of money, but it's up to you to put in the work. Yeah. So YouTube was simply another way to advertise for free and you know if you look way back at the old old ones they were just commercials you know hi this is matthew and you know uh so self-conscious oh hi this is matthew hi guys. Do, you, do you need some trash picked up in sonoma county give, give, give me a call guys hey guys hey guys but oh you gotta gosh. start somewhere right you gotta and, do it and um and that's all that we started that and then we thought oh yeah, it might be kind of fun to just, we'll just record ourselves doing a few jobs because other people might uh, want to do this too. And wow, this is really working for us. This could work for other people. And especially with Matt's background, like, you know, and it, from the very beginning, I was like, you should just be so authentic and be yourself and just put it out there. Let people know where you were and what you used to do and how you changed your life. I'm like, that's way better of a story and so authentically real to just do that. So many people call me up and they're like, damn, bro, I've been through the same thing as you. I just got out of jail. I I was doing the, the wrong things in life. I started a dumpster rental business or a junk removal business. And guess what? My life is so good now. So I, didn't, I had no idea how many people 
would really like the videos, actually subscribe to the channel, and actually watch us and leave comments. I had no idea how big the channel will get. And actually, our subscriber count is going up big time. It just within, well, actually, like within the past month. And then actually just within the past like week. Yeah, I was going to say three days. It's three days. Crazy. Jojo so, keeps if, looking at us like, we got another one. Oh, we got two more. But oh, he, we got another so one. So once again, though, you go back to patience because it doesn't happen overnight. Patient, we, being consistent. Yeah, because, you know, like like we said, we were just doing commercials and we we had no idea. We When we got 100 subscribers, we were like, oh, my God, oh 100 my gosh, people 100. want us want to watch us pick up trash. A hundred people <laughs> we were, you know, and, and now it's like 30,000. It's just, it's unbelievable to me. And, you know, people with really huge channels, they might not think that, that but it's big. It's really big. To oh us. yeah, for sure. It's big to us for sure. I remember, um, I remember when I got my first penny in my account. I was so happy. I got my first 10 cents in my account. I was like, Holy shit. Yo, you want it? You want getting it? paid on oh, the first yeah. commercial. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, How exciting! We're legit like, it's a now. Commercial. It's a, it was a what was it? A Will Smith commercial? Like, oh, we made it! We it's made a it! Real commercial with like a real person. We, oh so shit! Silly. That's Stuff funny. Like that, silly. Um, we have a spin to will, uh, win will where you can win a business card, magnet, a lanyard, cinch bag, and more. So you do that after every uh, um. After, after every job, that's really cool, and that's different. That's at the home event, I do believe. Oh, that no, there you go. That's what. Damn, that's where that Jojo, was. really pull out a thing and spin it for the customer. Well, I was like, I was like that's damn, damn. You know? but um, yeah, no, that's super cool. But now, um, I kind of wa also want to go back to a question I seen a long time ago, and I can't even try to find it because. But she was like, "Does it feel awkward?" It, it seemed awkward to her to ask for a review at the end of a job when you're done with the job. I feel awkward sometimes with tips. When it comes, not a so check it out. When it comes to reviews, you got to do it. It shouldn't feel awkward. If you did a good job, just ask for a review. Don't be happy to do it, yeah, I think. If, if you did a shitty job, don't ask for a review. But don't do a shitty job. Don't feel awkward at all. You got to get over that. If you want to get your business out there, you got to be the face of your business. You got to advertise every single day. You got to show up with whatever you have right now and don't feel bad about it. Just do what you got to do to live that better life. I would ask every, I ask every single customer, hey, you mind leaving a review? It helps our business out. How many reviews do we have? 410 reviews. You don't get those by not asking. And then it takes us right back, right back to confidence, confidence. So if you're feeling a little awkward asking for a review, you got to work on that confidence. Um, Matthew words it perfectly when they're like, oh my gosh, you absolutely saved the day. I don't know what I would do like without you. A lot of times in junk removal, people have big things happening. Somebody has died and you made it easier for them somebody's moving, you know how stressful moving is, you made it easier for them. They want to be able to park their car in the garage. You made it easier for them. They can't afford the storage unit anymore. You cleaned it out. You made it easier for them. There are so many opportunities when people are so ecstatically happy when you are done that it's the perfect time to be like, would you, if I send you a link, would you mind leaving a review? It's how we get all of our business or most of our business. That's, that's your script. Oh, it's when, whenever you hear them say, thank you, you, it, would you mind leaving a review? If I send you a link, send them a link, make it really easy. All they have to do is click on it, hit the star, you know, um, would you mind leaving me a review? If I send you a link, it really helps my small business out. They'll do it just like that. Super easy. Don't feel weird about it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And a mustache says uh, he loves us. So thank you. We'll love you right back. Right on, mustache. Uh, what made you start junk removal? You could tell your story a little bit. 
uh, were there any other business ideas considered when starting? So check it out. I said this a million times already. Okay. So I went to rehab, went to Salvation Army, started working on the trucks, picking up donations. We would show up to places to pick up donations and it had like the cat attacked the couch. It was all ripped up or maybe some stuff was like broken and they asked, can you take this? And we're like, no, we can't take this. Then the people would ask, well, who can we call? Then right then I thought, you know what? I can start a junk removal business and pick up this stuff for people. So it took me about two years later after getting out of rehab, working a shitty job. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Those people needed stuff removed. And I can start a junk removal business. And that's how it all started. It all started going to rehab, picking up donations. People wanted us to take stuff. We couldn't take it because it was damaged. And they asked, who can we call? We don't know no one to call. That's where I got the idea from. And that goes right back to uh, searching your area and finding a need. Oh, Why? my gosh. I got a cramp. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got a cramp. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. Oh, go ahead, Jojo. So this oh, would be the oh, time when I oh, would preach oh, to him. Oh, no, stop, Jojo. Um, oh, that oh, happens when you don't oh, drink enough water. Oh, but he gets really mad when oh, I do that because oh, when you're in a lot of pain, oh, you don't want oh, people to tell you. Let me get some water right. Oh, my gosh. But, I'm in so, some pain right now. So this man did five full loads by 1230 and probably drank no water. Oh, my gosh. I drank coconut water. Be nice. In an herbe mate. Yeah. Woo! That one was bad. Oh my gosh. Woo. So, and then, yes, we, and then we, we tried moving just a little bit and realized that's definitely not for us. Nothing we never to again. Do. People are stressed. They, you're carrying their prized possessions from one place to another. And yeah, moving's not for us. We, you can make great money doing moving. So, if that's your passion, do no. that. It's not my passion. <laughs> Check it out. Still got a cramp. There was a lady, an old sweet lady named Triple OG. Triple OG. That was her name. Sweetest old lady in the world. I helped her move. And what happened? Oh, my gosh. Tell him. Tell him what happened. <laughs> he was so nice. Here. So we helped her move. And she packed her boxes. And her boxes were so heavy that even Matt had a hard time. We had to rebox. They were something. filled with books upstairs. But it was bad. It was upstairs. And then when we we took got got her to her place, she was so excited. She was so excited about leaving her place that she oh. was she was singing "Moving Out the Ghetto." She was literally singing that in she our was. truck. We even drove her to her new house, emptied out, uh, you know. Oh my put all the packages in her new apartment and she had the audacity to call Matt later on that night and said, you lost my power cord. I can't find my power cord. And she was like, I think she, she, I think she, she was, was drunk. She had been drinking drunk. a little bit. She her was, Matt. was drunk. And so Matt's like, here, I'm going to make this better for you. I'm going to pick you up. So he goes to her house, picks her <sighs> up, drives her because she can't drive. Drives her to Target, buys her a new cord, takes her back to her house, walks her into the into her apartment, looks around and realizes that she has not emptied not one box that she had. They packed. were all still packed after she called me like 30 times yelling at me. Yeah. So Never they, again. You know, we looked at each other and we're like, moving's not for us. We're not gonna be movers. And rest in peace, Triple OG. I'm just keeping it real. She yeah, is she's, not with us she's no more. Passed away. Yeah. She, she oh. moved, moved again, once again <laughs> out the ghetto. She did. Yeah. That's horrible, Joe. <laughs> <Joe's. laughs> kind of funny. Oh my god. Uh, let's see. Junk Genie had been following your advice and got our first track last week. Thank you both for changing people's lives. We love that. That's awesome. Keep it up. Take our advice. We we really really try. We genuinely want everybody to be super successful. And sometimes we get slack. People are like, everybody's starting junk removal businesses oh because of you. But really, oh. we just want to see you start a business and start working for yourself. Doesn't have to be junk removal. But if I was going to start a business and I knew how to be a handyman, I'd be a handyman for sure. There's so much money in the handyman business. People need that. 
They really, really need that. I would do a handyman business. I'd do a car detailing business. I would start a YouTube channel. Yeah, that's a good one too. Just a YouTube channel and have fun with it. And don't do it because you think you're going to get rich. Do it because you have wisdom that you could provide to others. And I like it when our videos teach you something that maybe you didn't know. You walk away with a gold nugget. Like, I thought I knew a lot of stuff. And I just learned something by watching this video. And hopefully, we motivate you to try your best. And hopefully, you laugh once or twice. Because humor makes life fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and we've tried yeah. to put all of that in, um, you know, in everything. So... Thank you. I offer, oh, R5 says, I offer my customers $20 off if they fill out a review while she's still there. That's one way to do it for sure. Uh, and you know what? Um, you know, whoever it was that said they feel a little awkward leaving, um, uh, asking for a review, that might make you feel a little bit better. You can offer your customers something. You could be like, If I, if I send you a review, I mean, if I send you a link, would you mind leaving a review? That's how I get a lot of business. And it's an opportunity for you to, you could save 10, save 15, save 20, whatever you feel like doing. It gives you an opportunity to save $20. I, who's going to say no to that? Not only are you making it easy for them because you're sending them the link, you're letting them know how important it is to you as a small business. And you're also letting them know what it could do for them if they did it. It's a win-win for yeah. sure. So that's thank you uh, for for bringing that up because that's you know and and then that I think gets rid of the awkwardness because you're offering them something. You're not asking for you're doing both, but you're offering them something for yeah, it. So I can rub your feet, massage your back, with, any whatever crap. you need me to do. I'm Look, just kidding. She agrees with me. Drink I know. More water. I know. I, I was hurting. I was hurting. <laughs> I was hurt for like a good <laughs> two minutes right there. Oh my gosh. Woo. So Excalibur. Whoops, whoops. Yep. Y'all are the reason why I started my junk removal business almost three years ago after I quit working in the aerospace industry. Well, that's an interesting job. <laughs> you worked in the aerospace industry for junk removal. But you know what? You got to be happy, right? And for whatever reason, you wanted to accomplish more then that was giving you. So good for you in doing that. And we got my buddy, Matt Fitch in the building. Matt Fitch, what's going on? He says, hey, hey. Hey, hey. So on Thursday next week at 5 p.m. Cali time, we're doing some in his Facebook group. We're going to try to link it to our YouTube channel. It'll be on his YouTube channel. So if you don't know who Matt Fitch is, look him up right now. Follow him on YouTube. There's going to be a bunch of us on there. There's going to be Andrew Thompson, Matt Fitch, and a couple other guys. And we're going to be going over pricing, how to price jobs. He asked me, hey, you mind hopping on? I said, hell yeah, we can do that. So we'll be on there for about an hour, yeah. an hour, maybe two hours. So make sure you guys check in. And I'll try to put a link on our YouTube channel and hopefully be able to figure out how to live stream it on our channel. Hopefully. Yeah. And that's going to be so great because it is the number one thing that is so difficult. And that's like really pricing because it's not a one size fits all. A lot of people are like, you don't give your pricing in, in the videos. And we're like, we, we really kind of, we kind of do. We tell you, you know, roundabout, you know, like how we you do a flat rate. And then sometimes at the end of the day, we'll tell you how much we made. And, and if you knew that we did three jobs, you can kind of divide how much we made by the three jobs. You kind of you kind of figure it out. But we have competitors that watch our channel. So we're not going to, you know, give all of our pricing strategies. But watching, you know, watching that on Thursday will help you come up with the pricing strategy that works for you in your area because every area is different. Right. Um, every dump, you know, charges like Alabama is going to be different than California. Your your dump fees are going to be different. Your uh, uh, medium income that all that's going to be different. So and one thing with me, like I said earlier, is I try to sell myself to the customer before I even give them a price. So I'm over there BSing. 
talking to them and selling myself. Because when someone likes you and trusts you and you give them a fair price, guess what? They're going to go with you. They're going to go with you. They're not going to want to call someone else up. So um, in our six-week course that we offer, our next class actually is all about pricing. All about pricing. All about pricing. Pricing uh, over the phone, how to answer phones, how to have confidence, how to talk with confidence, how to lock jobs in, what to charge. How to do it all. How to do it all, baby. That's what we're doing next week. And then Thursday, we'll talk some more pricing. Some more pricing with Matt. Yep. And he says he's looking forward to uh, us joining him on Thursday. Right on, right on, right on. So we're pretty much ending it, but really, you know, really quick. If you can think of things that will keep you from being successful, just flip it. Do the opposite. You want to be patient. You want to show up early. You want to be prepared. You want to be confident. You want to advertise. You want to ask for referrals. You want to ask for reviews. And um, you want to do the things today that helped your future self. And just remember, if you don't do all this shit, guess what? Your pockets are going to start having lint in them. Mr. Mavic, my pockets are fat. The Joe Jolina, her pockets are fat because we do all this stuff on the daily. We're patient. We advertise. We're ready to do the jobs. We ask for referrals. We ask for reviews. We are on the hustle 24-7. I eat, sleep, and breathe junk removal on the daily. So we're always on the hustle. We're some go-getters. We're not broke-minded thinking, oh, we can't do this, making excuses why I ain't got no money and the crackhead took my job. (laughs) Guess what? That was never your job from the beginning. So I never count money until it's in my hand. So get out there and make shit happen. And remember, me and the JoJo, we love all you guys. Even the haters. Even the haters out there, JoJo. You see it right there? We love all you guys. And remember, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.